Yo, what the hell's up? Welcome back to Reviews with Jake, where I just got done watching The Lovebirds on Netflix. The Lovebirds is about a seasoned couple who accidentally find themselves wrapped up in a murder and end up being the primary suspects for it. So they set out to try and find the true murderer themselves to avoid doing time for a crime they did not commit. But before we get started, let's address the elephant in the room, which are the posters in the room. Super stoked on these things because I ordered them off Etsy like a month ago, then the day after I ordered them, I got the tracking information saying that they were coming from Malaysia, which I did not know. So I automatically thought, oh great, well, I'm never gonna see these, that was 130 bucks well spent. But then they showed up like a month later and they looked sharp as hell. As mentioned when I first started doing the video reviews, everything is kind of up in the air and subject to change, including the backdrop and, well, here we are. So yeah, exciting times, I mean, they're posters. Anyway, so on with the review. So unlike many of the other quote-unquote Netflix originals, The Lovebirds was actually scheduled and set to have a theatrical release back in April. And it was actually on my list to see because the trailer looked super hilarious and Kumail is, well, hilarious. However, like damn near every other movie that was supposed to come out in the last couple months, it sailed right past its scheduled release date in April and found itself in, well, purgatory. But unlike most of those movies, it was able to find itself a new home at Netflix. I imagine that's because this is a very low-budget, small-scale comedy versus these massive blockbusters that were supposed to come out but haven't found its home because of COVID. Marvel movies, Bond movies, these live-action Disney movies, even some of these horror movies with big, intricate, massive monsters like A Quiet Place and Antlers. All these movies probably cost a stupid amount of money to create, and now... They have to somehow make that money back, and they can't. With streaming alternatives, I'd imagine there's a lot of uncertainty. There's no guarantee that that's going to make the amount of money that you need in order to break even, and I'd imagine that scares the hell out of studio execs. But with a small-scale, theatrical-caliber comedy like this, I mean, it probably costs pennies to make in comparison to these huge, multi-million dollar blockbusters, so why not? Which the state of Hollywood and movies right now is kind of a weird statement in itself. I mean, everything needs to be so grand and big and expensive nowadays, whereas you don't really see these small-scale comedies anymore. Like when you consider the 90s and early 2000s when Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler were just cranking out small-scale comedies, I'm sure if that was in this day and age, they probably would have found a home pretty quickly because they were small-scale but really successful. But you don't really see those type of movies anymore. At least that seems to make sense to me, but then again, I'm not a Hollywood exec, so that kind of thinking is kind of above my pay grade. The bottom line is I was excited to see this movie even before COVID hit, and so the fact that I can see it now as a new release despite the world being on fire is exciting. It gives me a sense of normalcy, which is kind of fleeting nowadays. So the pros definitely start with the acting. Both Kumail and I believe her name is Issa Rae, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but both of them knocked it out of the park. I mean, they definitely stole the show. I'm completely unfamiliar with her work, but she definitely was just oozing charisma, just like Kumail always does, and they worked really well off each other. Great comedic timing. The delivery for the dialogue, the banter, the bickering, I mean, all that was sold so well because of these two actors. I mean, they definitely killed it. This movie had some solid enjoyment and chuckles. I mean, I was smiling from start to finish. I mean, I don't think, though, I was ever audibly laughing, which kind of does bring me right to the cons. A usual problem with comedies, most of the great laughs were found in the trailer. Everything else that wasn't on blast in the trailer were kind of a few shelves down in the haha -ha scale. Which again is not a new problem for comedies. I mean, seeing the best moments in the trailer is a story as old as time. But the fact that the marketing materials also set up another con that I have for me is even more troublesome. Now I can only speak for myself, but as I watched the marketing materials in the trailer for this movie, I got the sense that these two characters that were going through these events were in love. Whether that's the freshness of a new relationship or just a sturdy one in general. I mean, whatever in between that, I got the sense that these two characters were in love, hence the title Lovebirds. However, you find out very, very quickly in this movie that these are two characters in a relationship that isn't really on its way in, but more so on its way out, which is a bummer. If you've been watching my reviews, you probably know that a big thing that I look for for kudos in movies is making me feel something. I, I, I want to leave a movie feeling something. For comedies, that feeling is often laughter, enjoyment, but I get that that's not always the case. Like, take Big Time Adolescence this year, for instance. Like, that movie was not as funny as I was hoping it would be, but it replaced some of that void with real heart, like character development, like I cared about these characters. So whereas there was kind of a vacancy and void that I wasn't feeling at the end of it, it replaced it with something else. 
This movie does something similar by giving you a seasoned couple who has just lost their romantic spark. I mean, things are not going well for them, and then they get thrown into this vicarious situation. As they're trying to solve this murder case, they keep having these little exchanges and little subplots that try and pull at your emotional strings to know what these two are going through emotionally while doing this, but it just never really lands. It doesn't have anything concrete, anything real to feel. I just didn't really feel anything toward their relationship or what was left of it. So if I didn't really feel any laughter toward the movie in its aspect to comedy, or I didn't feel any emotional connection to the characters and their relationship, what am I supposed to feel? I only bring this up because I feel as if I got the movie that I thought I was going to get with actual lovebirds going through this scenario versus an old married couple, essentially. I feel like that would have been a lot better. It would have given the narrative some focus, you know, really just focus solely on the comedy aspect. You have two leads that were more than capable of carrying that movie instead of trying to distract it by throwing in these kind of half-assed emotional attempts. Instead, what we get is a plot that's super indecisive and tone, very predictable, and just felt very unsatisfying once it hit its conclusion. And then a small technical gripe that I had was the editing. There were moments of very poor editing. Some sequences were super choppy, while other ones were just littered with jump cuts, which honestly, if the movie were funnier and the narrative were stronger, I probably would have been able to overlook these, but just since I wasn't really enjoying myself as much, I was able to kind of spot these and they just seemed a little bit more glaring. All in all, this wasn't a terrible movie, despite everything I just said. It's just very disposable. You can pop it on your Netflix queue, and then on a rainy, boring, slow day, you can push play on it, but I wouldn't go out of your way to schedule a time to sit down and watch it like, well, I did. I'm gonna give The Lovebirds a C-. minus. But that's just me. What do you guys think? Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to this channel and stay up to date on new reviews coming real soon. Stay safe and thanks for checking in.